Come, let us return to the Lord our God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and abounding in love. And this is In The Moment. I'm your host, Reverend Ricky Allen Jr. Thanking you as always for joining us on this lovely day the Lord has made. And I just pray as you are enjoying the, the summertime weather that's finally here, uh, the grilling, being out in the pool or at the beach, or maybe you're traveling. I just pray that whatever you are doing, wherever you are, that you are allowing the Lord Jesus Christ to leave the way, even in your fun. Let him cover the enjoyment you're having with his presence and his grace so that you are protected from the wiles of Satan, even in your best life. Amen. So with that being said, let's get started. We're in Joel this week, Joel 2. Uh, starting at verse 12, going to verse 13. So Joel 2, 12 through 13 reads as follows. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. And there are so many right now especially during this month, and you know what I'm talking about, that need to come back to the Lord. Satan has fooled you. you. You've been led to believe that the way the Lord has designed your life is incorrect. And I'm here to let you know, in the name of Jesus Christ, through the intervention of the Holy Ghost, that I pray that you do return to the Lord. I pray now that you come back understanding that forgiveness it's just a prayer away. The Lord desires to see you back in his graceful arms in his kingdom. Don't, don't think about it. Just come back wherever you are. And I know that you're living the life you feel you should be living, that you want to live, that you, you feel like it, it, this is what I'm doing now. It doesn't have to be that way. And for that, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for everybody out here celebrating this month um, celebrating things that are contrary to God. And I want you to know that we still love you, but we want you to come back home. Just come on back home. No shame, no guilt, no judging. Just come on home. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you today praying and giving thanks, acknowledging our sins and seeking your forgiveness your word reminds us that you are gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. We confess our wrongdoings, our failures, and the times we have turned away from you. Even now, so many are still in that state. Forgive them, Lord, for the times that they thought about coming back that chose not to, giving into their fleshly desires. Forgive us, Lord, for the times we have strayed away from your path and ignored your voice. Cleanse us from our sins and renew our spirits. Help us to rend our hearts, not just our garments, and truly repent with sincere hearts. And Lord, as for those who are out there still wandering around the wilderness, wondering who they are and what they stand for, may you reveal your word to them. May they accept it. May they confess and repent and be saved and come back to the kingdom of God. For we know they're wonderfully made. They just don't know it. Lord, we ask for your revelation on their path of life, wherever they are and whatever they're doing. Guide us to walk in your ways, to live according to your will, and to show your love to others not in compromise but in authentic godly love to let them know where they need to be and what they need to be doing right now we thank you for your unending mercy and grace and we pray for those who turn back to you to fill them with the holy spirit and leave them on the path of righteousness these and all things we ask in the name of jesus christ Amen. 
Our topic today is setting the mind, the key to spiritual victory. Setting the mind, the key to spiritual victory. We're coming from Romans 8, 5 through 8. So go ahead and turn there. Romans 8, 5 through 8 reads as follows. Those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the spirit have their mind set on what the spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, help us set our minds correctly. We pray, Father, that we dive into your word effectively pulling out the key ingredients to spiritual victory. As the world celebrates sin all around us and idolizes it and makes money off of it, if we're gonna be real about it, we know, Lord, what is right and wrong. And even though we have to stand by ourselves at times, we stand. Give us that strength, Father. And may you bless the reading of your already blessed word in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. What we're looking at here is something that many of you are seeing right now in the media, seeing right now maybe around your neighborhoods and your schools. There is a wave of submission to the flesh, willful submission. Let me be very clear about that. Uh, this is a choice matter, okay? This is not circumstance. This is not you just fell into it, no. This is a matter of choice. Those who are living beyond the, beyond the will of God have made choices. You don't want to believe it. It might even hurt your feelings, but it's true. Those who are, are living right now outside of the will of God have made choices. What do I mean? They've made a choice to be angry at God they, for how they were raised and the situations and circumstances they were brought up in. They have made a choice to live contrary to God's will in their lifestyles because they, they just feel like, you know what? I am enjoying myself. I am loved. I am accepted. I am desired. And these are things that we all want. Yes, yeah, very true. But the problem is, is how you're getting it. It's not a matter of being rich. It's the matter of how are you becoming rich? Because there are various ways to become rich out here. And a lot of them are not good. All right. So that's what we're looking at here. It's a, it's a matter of a choice. It, there is something that has happened in your life where Satan presented to you an alternative. And because the alternative is exactly what you wanted, though you know you've got to make some compromises to make this whole thing work, you have made the choice to do it. So what do we look at when we look at this text here that Paul is addressing to the Romans. Uh, the first thing you need to understand is mindset matters. Your mindset matters in this entire process. What does scripture say? For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. We read that in eight verse five. Our mindset shapes our actions and our life directions. If we focus on worldly desires, our lives reflect those priorities. Conversely, a spirit-led mindset guides us towards godly living. The mind is the battlefield where spiritual warfare takes place. Plain and simple. I got people right now around me, even in my church community, that, that believe that if I can just stay in church all night long and 24-7, I'll be okay. But that's not practical, is it? Life is happening around you. People need you. The Lord needs you out there representing the kingdom. But you're so weak in the mind. You're so weak. You're so feeble. You're so fragile that you can't do anything because you can barely take care of yourself. And just like on an airplane where they tell you before you put the mask on anybody else, you got to put it on yourself. You're fumbling to get that to happen. So you're thinking, well, this is the way I need to live to get myself right. 
That's because the battlefield of your mind is being overtaken. You're not strong enough. Where is your prayer life? Where is your walk with the Lord? Where are your conversations with Jesus Christ? Do you not believe? And if you do, where is your level of faith at? Is it in functionality only? Are you beating yourself up every time you fail? Are you beating yourself up every time you, you think or say something or do something wrong? Why not ask for forgiveness? Why not put yourself around people that are going to help you out instead of sitting there wallowing in the defeat? A lot of you are doing that. It's time to change that. When we fix our thoughts on earthly things like wealth, power, or pleasure, we become enslaved to those desires leading us away from God's purpose for our lives. However, when our thoughts are aligned with the Spirit, we prioritize love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The fruits of the Spirit, of course, in Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Go ahead and read that on your off time. This alignment does not happen by accident, though. It requires intentional effort, was what I just said, and daily commitment to spiritual disciplines like prayer, Bible study, meditation on God's Word. What are you doing when you get up in the morning? What pace are you setting for yourself? That's the real question here. Are you setting a good pace? or bad pace. It's going to lead you to, to complete wrongdoing the entire day. By setting our minds on the Spirit, we open ourselves to transformation and renewal, allowing God to mold us into the image of His Son, Jesus Christ. And then there is the flesh versus the Spirit. The, uh, the, the, the scripture says the mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. Romans 8, 6. There's a stark contrast between flesh-driven and spirit-led life. The former leads to spiritual death, while the latter brings life and peace. This underscores the importance of aligning our minds with the spirit. A flesh-governed mind is preoccupied with temporary and destructive pursuits, resulting in anxiety, stress, and a sense of emptiness. In contrast, a mind governed by the Spirit experiences the fullness of life as intended by God. This life is characterized by peace that goes beyond understanding, joy that is not dependent on circumstances, and a sense of purpose. Who needs a sense of purpose out there right now? The Spirit-led mind is in harmony with God's will, leading to a flourishing life that reflects the glory of God. This transformation is evidence of God's power at work within us, turning our natural inclinations away from sin and towards righteousness. The peace we experience is not just the absence of conflict, but the presence of God's wholeness and tranquility in our lives. This peace guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, providing stability and assurance amid life's challenges, Philippians 4, 7. And then there is the hostility or harmony. You see what happens when you're when you're contrasting the flesh with the spirit? There are things that you are going to be putting on yourselves extra. If you just gave it all to Jesus Christ, you wouldn't be going through half the mess you're going through right now. But because you want it your way, you can't have the way. And because you do not have the way, you have to go out there and find a way for yourself, even though the way, Jesus Christ, has already paid the way for you. So what your problem is, is not that you're tired, it's not that you're restless, it's not that you are depressed and stressed and on every self-help book known to man on ChristianBook.com, your problem is you are not in harmony with the Lord. And you get mad at God about that. That's the part that trips me out. You get mad at God about that. How dare you? Reflect on what you are doing. Sometimes it's not demons. Sometimes it's not uncleanliness. Sometimes it's just your bad attitude. 
And let's just get real about it. Sometimes the things that are happening to you, the things that are occurring in your life occurs from your bad attitude. It begins up here and then it goes here and then it comes out. And your problem at that point is you are creating bad waves instead of good waves. Hostility or harmony, that's your question today. Are you gonna live hostile or are you gonna live in harmony? Scripture says, the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. A mind set on the flesh is in rebellion against God and cannot follow his commands. How many of you all right now are living out there in a lifestyle that you know is in rebellion to God and you're not following his commands? Now, when I say God, I'm not talking about your general purpose God, lowercase g, that you're serving out there, calling it God, uppercase g. It is incorrect. You're not, you're not putting God in his proper context. I'm talking about the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, the God of Jacob, the God of Peter, God, the God of Paul, who sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on an old rugged cross for your sins and mine. That's the God I'm talking about. So before we go any further talking about God this and God that, let's make sure we understand the God that we're talking about here. Because many of you serve general purpose God and you're calling it the God of the Bible. And that is incorrect because you know, and I know, that's not who you serve. The mindset on the flesh is indeed in rebellion. This hostility highlights the need for the transformation of the mind to achieve spiritual harmony with God. Why are we focused so much on your mind, on your thoughts, on what you are interpreting up there? Because that operates everything else in your body. Without your brain, nothing else happens in your body. Are we, are you know, this is basic health class here, all right? If Satan can take a hold of your mind, he got your body. He can make your body look like anything he wants it to look like if he has a hold of your mind. And he puts in these walls, these, these protective measures that make sure that you may take in the knowledge of God, but you are never transformed by the knowledge of God. It is just knowledge to you. Why? Because it's the same thing he offered Eve in the garden. Knowledge. He told her you could be like God. That's why he doesn't want you out there eating from that tree. And she looked at it and made a choice and ate the fruit. And then she gave it to Adam, who made a choice and ate the fruit. When our minds are controlled by the flesh, we find ourselves at odds with God's desires for our lives. This resistance is not just passive. It, this is an active rebellion that rejects God's authority and wisdom. Now, such a mindset is incapable of understanding or submitting to God's laws as it is fundamentally opposed to his nature. Now, this is where a lot of Christians fail because you're, you're so busy witnessing and discipling, you gotta look at the bigger picture here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read that one more time for you. Such a mindset is incapable of understanding or submitting to God's laws as it is fundamentally opposed to his nature. However, when we allow the Holy Spirit to renew our minds, we begin to experience a shift from hostility to harmony. This transformation involves a deep internal change where our desires and priorities are aligned with God's will. As we grow in our relationship with him, our resistance fades and we develop a genuine desire to please him and live according to the statutes. That is called a relationship and as you grow in your relationship whether it's your friendship whether it's your marriage or whether it's relationship with your with your children there are things that you are going to pull back and pull away and put to the side to build that relationship someone knows what i'm talking about out there because you're married and you know you're not the same person you were when you got married attitude wise um worldview wise all these things they change why because you are changing to meet the needs of the relationship and those who sit there and say well this is who i am and he got to accept me for who i am and this is who i am and she's got to accept me for who i am no they do not marriage is oneness how can it be oneness if you're fighting to maintain your own identity 
I don't know what that is for you. Maybe you're nervous. Maybe you're scared. Maybe you've never had your own identity. And so now you're saying to yourself, I want to be married. I desire to be married, but I want to maintain who I am at the same time. You will. Trust me, you will. However, there must be a oneness to occur so that the, the identity that you have is shared by the person you love. That's called being a team. That's called being in unity with the spirit. When we allow the Holy Spirit to renew our minds, we begin to experience a shift to this, ho from, to this harmony from this hostility. This harmonious relationship with God, let's be honest, brings about a sense of belonging and purpose as we are no longer at war with our Creator, but we are walking in step with His Spirit. Many of you are looking to belong. That's why you're out there protesting. That's why you agree with the protest. Many of you are out there looking to belong and you want to be accepted and you want to be affirmed and you want to be acknowledged. And you will take that however it comes. Even it means making some physical changes to yourself. Even if it means changing your thought processes changing your worldview, even if it means sacrificing your relationship with God to make it happen. In the name of being happy. That's why the religion of kindness exists. Because it gives you the space to continue in a sinful nature and it puts up the wall around you so that everybody that sees you is so worried about being kind to you they're not addressing their love for you and letting you know you're doing wrong. That's what it is. Do you want to live that way? Are you sure this is the way you want to live? Just let me do whatever I want to do, regardless if it's right or wrong, regardless if it's harmful to my health, harmful to my mind and soul. And the only thing I need from you, friend, relative, loved one, husband, wife, it's just accepted. You want me to sit there and watch you die. That's the part that's just, I can't take that. You want me to sit there knowing that I have access to the cure to help you get better. I can get you the spiritual medication, this, the spiritual therapy that you've been desiring to bring you into a kingdom that will it, turn you around and, and lift you up and redeem you and restore you and transform you into what you've always desired just through God and not the world. And you want me to sit there and just watch you die, watch you weather away, because time doesn't care. And I don't want you sitting here waiting five, six, seven, eight years later, maybe 50 years later, as you watch your peers in their marriages, in their golden years, enjoying the grandchildren, enjoying the great-grandchildren, going on vacations with their loved ones, and you chose another path that gave you all the physical needs, but none of the spiritual. You chose a path where you're not covered by God, you're covered by Satan. And he doesn't care about your future because your future is set. The separation from God is your future. I don't want that for you. Something to think about. And then there is pleasing God. So we've had the understanding that mindset matters. We understand the, the battle between flesh and spirit. We understand the choice of hostility or harmony. And now it's just down to just pleasing God. There is this, the ongoing struggle to please God. Verse 8 says this. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. It can't, Paul cannot carry this home hard enough and loud enough to let you see this. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. What is a realm? It is a space. It is an area where you are dwelling and residing. So for many of you, you are in the realm of the flesh. You are in the realm where you're serving the flesh, you're living in the flesh. Everything you do and say is connected to your flesh, not God. 
living according to the flesh makes it impossible to please God. Only by setting our minds on the Spirit can we live a life that is pleasing to Him and experience true spiritual victory. What does it mean to set your mind? It's like when you see the brick masons out there and they're laying the brick down and they're getting it all straight. Well, there's also a guy out there whose job is to make sure that it's set. He's banging it down and moving it slapping the, the excess away and he's he's shaping and forming it to make sure that the brick is set. Why? Because when it's set, it can maintain a, a strong functional foundation for whatever is being built. God through Christ Jesus has already set in you the spiritual foundation for, for him to build on and to build up something inside of you in the name of Christ Jesus for his glorification. The problem is you are not allowing for that setting to take place because your mind and your body is doing everything else what it's supposed to do. It's not being founded on the proper material for anything to be set. And as a result, nothing can be built. This is where you are. This is who you are. Pleasing God requires more than just external conformity to rules. It necessitates in the inward transformation of the heart and mind. When we live according to the flesh, our actions, thoughts, and motivations are self-centered and disconnected from God's purposes. This self-centeredness erects a barrier between us and God. We've been talking about that throughout this entire message, making it impossible to align with his will or bring him glory. However, when we set our minds on the spirit, we undergo this metamorphosis, you could say, where our thoughts, desires, and actions become self-centered. The spirit-led life, this spirit-led life we are in, is characterized by obedience, faith, and love, which is pleasing to God. It's a life that seeks honor to honor him in all things, not out of obligation, but out of genuine relationship with him. Make sure that your spiritual functionality is in alignment with your spiritual connection to God, your relationship with Jesus Christ. They must meet at the middle, okay? This whole thing about, well, if I just could do this, or if I could just could do that, that's performance-based. You're thinking, well, if I do all these things, then this will happen. And if I do all these things, that will happen. You are not in the correct understanding of grace. Grace is, grace is given whether you can do anything or not. It is your faith response to Jesus Christ that is important here. And it's not in the doing to get there. We've already have that in place through the redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Your job as a believer, <clears throat> excuse me, is to respond to it correctly. Are you responding to the gospel correctly? Or are you still lost in the law like so many are out here? A lot of your prosperity ministers, if you notice, they stay in the Old Testament. They don't look at the redemptive work of Christ. A lot of your ministers out here who are looking for control, who are looking for uh, financial gain or glory or something that is going to put them on top of the rest of the ministers are looking for this prophetic power or flow or healing. They focus on these things because these things reflect on them and not of God. It is performance based ministry. It is more uh, sports entertainment than it is actually the preaching and teaching of the gospel. Because if you don't leave there asking yourself, how does that get me closer to Jesus Christ? Then you got to ask yourself, what, you what did you just listen to? This is a life that seeks to honor him in all things. This transformation enables us to live out the greatest commandments to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Matthew 22, 37 through 39. And in doing so, we reflect the character of Christ and fulfill our divine purpose, bringing joy to the heart of our Heavenly Father. How does that help us live out our divine purpose? Because when we're balanced, we can help somebody else be balanced. And when we are loved, we can help somebody else feel loved through Christ Jesus. And if you're out there right now and you know that you're not there, I know many of you are probably not there. It's okay. Contact us. 
get-prayer.com. That's the website, get-prayer.com. We do update it occasionally with different devotionals and prayer journal ideas and things of that nature. Uh, shoot us an email. Let us know what we can pray for. You know, let us know where God is helping you in your life. and Maybe we can encourage other people out here. Because we want to make sure that your mind is set for you to achieve that spiritual victory. But you have to trust the Lord, get up, and start turning towards the exit where victory is located. Get out of this sinful life. You don't have to be there. You never did. Until next time, may God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. You take care.